boy, I'm really excited to talk about that I hate. <laughs> uh. I was at a brewery the other day with my best friend Josh a fellow gamer, and another advocate of destigmatizing mental health. We had a long and in-depth conversation that day about all things in our lives, and I explained the social media fest to him that I was on at the time. I told him that even though I was off these apps for the time being, and although they were not on my phone, I was still overstimulating myself every chance I got without even realizing what I was doing. The focal point of our discussion was a video I stumbled upon from a French YouTuber, Alice Capel, about how the attention economy is killing us. And killing us it is indeed. Hyperattention, as Alice calls it, is where people overconsume media, information, and entertainment, often with no time to rest our brains. The algorithms of social media platforms are primarily to blame, as these platforms are designed to be as addictive as possible so that more ads can be seen. Oh, how I miss the days of old, when going on Facebook and Instagram, was to see what my friends were doing, not to be shown ads or pointless videos from influencers that don't matter at all. When combined with our modern hustle culture and achievement society, burnout and depression result from being over consumers in a society filled with people always trying to one-up each other. Now, there is nothing wrong with self-actualization, and one should pursue a journey of self-growth and achievement. Something should be done in these existentially pointless lives of ours. However, balance is key, as I preach in all my videos. When we are trying to hack our sleep schedule to enhance our productivity, that's how you know capitalism has created several problems in our civilization. In particular, Alice talked about going to a rally of a leftist leader in northern France, an area decimated by industrialization, making it poorer than the rest of the country. Instead of talking about typical working class topics such as workers' rights, though, this political leader talked about the right to quiet enjoyment. I honestly didn't really ingest much of the rest of the video because that phrase one I had never heard before, unlocked something deep inside within me that I never knew existed. As touched on in the previous video, in the weeks prior, I had just had a super successful gig at VGMCon. Like, I'm talking one of the best of my entire life. And the post-con depression I suffered from afterwards was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. A number of other setbacks happened in my life as well following that weekend. I got sick, I had a huge unexpected expense come up in my life, and I felt just generally gross and mentally unstable. I was filling my voids with overconsumption of media. No, literally, I was even listening to videos in the shower. I also stumbled upon some people making similar videos to me, like YouTube user Need on the Rocks. Their success in numbers in comparison to my own made me feel even more depressed than I already was. Other than his videos, which I genuinely enjoy and are super positive in nature, I was ingesting really negative content. Of course, we know the world is kind of a shithole right now, but there's no reason to be watching video after video about how the world is bad with no solution in sight. I gave an Uber ride to somebody recently who opened my eyes to this concept too. People on the internet fixate on certain subjects and just talk about how negative they are. They do this because it gets clicks, fear, and decisiveness sells, no matter how much we want to deny that. These videos are terrible for us when over-ingested. I knew I had to make a change. When Alice said the right to quiet enjoyment, it blew my mind. I had never thought about it as something that I needed to do, but when she said it, it immediately clicked in my head that I do need this in my life. I immediately poured myself a glass of wine, sat on my front step, and I stared at a tree for like an hour. The sun was setting during this time and I did some private journaling. When all was said and done, I felt amazing. Now, I suppose this is the same concept as meditating, right? However, for whatever reason, this concept was what clicked with me. And now I seek out the right to quiet enjoyment when I can get it. I try to do nothing for a little bit every day to reset myself. Okay, so if you know my channel, you'll know it's about video games and mental health. When I told my friend Josh about all of this, he suggested that I research The Sims for my next video due to its nuances in socializing juxtaposed with characters' usage of the internet and their phones. It was such a good idea that I had to run with it. That said, let's talk about social media and its usage cases, both good and bad, to lay the groundwork for the rest of the video. First, we must talk about the why. 
Why do people use social media? Well, because it's an absolutely wonderful tool for human connection. However, as a tool, it can be used in both good and bad ways. It's not just one or the other, as many would like to argue. Balance should not leave society, ever. In addition, the two main ways I see it being used are on the consumer side and on the creator side. So what are some good uses of social media? Well, on the consumer side, it's great for just what the name suggests and what the original intent of it was being social. Some of my best friends in my life that are far away from me geographically interact with me over social media. I have also met incredible people through these platforms. They have even become lifelong friends when we finally met in person and realized we clicked. It's also really nice to see updates from my friends that I haven't seen or heard from in a while. I can also keep up with events, go to said events, and socialize with people in real life. There is also something to be said about unifying with people when something happens to for instance, someone in the EDM scene here in Minneapolis, also a trans activist, was murdered at the time of my writing this. I know, it's terrible, but it gave us all in the scene a chance to unify and remember her, standing in solidarity, not only for her, but for trans rights. When people come together like this, it's truly a beautiful thing. On the creator side of social media, it is amazing to be able to get your art or content out into the world for people to see. Who knows if they'll stumble upon it or not, but... If they do, hey, you have the chance to make a little money from your work, which always feels good. As a marketing tool, it is extremely powerful, and it also lets you engage with current fans, meet new fans, and even help people if that is the kind of content or art you create. These are all tremendously beautiful things that these tools enable us to do. When social media first came out with MySpace, I do firmly believe its intentions were mostly good. I don't know exactly when the decision was made to pivot from a people-focused medium to an advertising machine. But the original intent of social media was, for the most part, pretty pure. Unless you take into account some of the original reasons Facebook started, but that would be another video. That said, because of the pivot to this business model and the overall nature of humanity, social media can also be used in a harmful manner as well. On the consumer side, we are hit with misinformation all the time, which informs society in a negative manner and harms humanity. Fights and literal wars have started over Facebook. I'm mostly talking about the genocide in Myanmar. And so Cyberbullying can get so out of control that people have killed themselves. Like, seriously. Celebrity chasing is very much a thing, too, and these so-called influencers fill people's heads with garbage every single day. But hey, it gets clicks, and then the platforms are able to throw ads in your face, so it's fine, I guess. Now, to be honest, I don't mind a few ads here and there. Heck, in the 90s, I actually looked forward to commercials because I thought they were really creative and really funny. Advertising as a whole was so much better back then. However, nowadays, in certain circumstances, it is too much. There is a part of me, though, that would rather watch a full ad than some of the garbage, low-effort content being created on these platforms. I guess that's what happens when literally everyone has access, but I digress. Heck, some people might even find my content to be garbage. <laughs> I guess it is subjective at the end of the day. On the creator side, we deal with cyberbullying too and often are way more susceptible to it as we are the ones who put ourselves out there all the time. The more exposure you have online too, the more you will encounter this. Even my friends in the VG empire who literally just make music deal with this. They don't even make content that like states an opinion, yet they are still sometimes lightly cyberbullied. Being in the spotlight can be overwhelming and can lead to people doing some terrible things sometimes. Should I mention P. Diddy? I even get overwhelmed sometimes with my absolutely, positively small following. At some cons, I get overwhelmed because I want to give every single person the attention that I think they deserve, but when it's too many people, it can be too much. Can you imagine if it was on the scale of someone super massive, like Taylor Swift or Beyonce? I sure can't and I never want to know. On top of this, creators deal with vanity metrics. Since our society only seems to measure things on how many people know about it or how much money it's made, creators can get constantly bombarded by these numbers as they pursue a lifestyle of creativity. Followers not growing fast enough? You suck. Losing followers? You suck. That experimental video not getting enough views? You suck. It goes on and on and on. Tie in capitalism and this really goes to shit. It can even lead some creators to just making things to please the algorithm them because they want number go up. They fall into a trap of creating things they hate just to stay relevant and keep making money. Oh, the woe this would cause in my well-being and mental health. I cannot even imagine it. Okay, okay, let's finally talk about video games. I want to explore what The Sims shows us about social media, fame, and 
everything related to it because we can absolutely learn from it in order to do something positive in our lives. Just as in real life, there are two sides to social media in The Sims. Their app Social Bunny is used on the consumer side. Now, Social Bunny's features are extremely limited. You are only allowed to post about stuff that you've done in the game that it deems interesting. Might I argue that this would be cool in real life too and might mitigate some of the garbage posts that happen in the world? Hmm. Reactions are limited. The text is pre-written, so you can't post about anything original, and you can only choose from a few different feelings that will be tied to your posts. You are also allowed to tag other sims in your posts to accomplish certain goals like flirting with someone or initiating hanging out with another sim to fill your social bar. While researching, I found a Reddit thread called, Am I the only person that doesn't like social media in The Sims? User Honest. Uh, Hanaist? I don't know how to say that. Goes on to say, It's such wasted potential. Like most things in The Sims, it could have been cool if it was done properly. I have to say though, this can absolutely apply to social media in real life, as what it has become in this day and age is very different from how it started out. The fact that there are even discussions like this in the first place about social media is proof that it has become problematic and is wasting its potential in the real world. The ad-ridden, garbage content, celebrity-chasing landscape it has become is not good for anyone's mental health. Perhaps if the energy of Social Bunny was balanced with the energy of modern day social media, it would create a fitting compromise. Hmm. A blog post by Xiao Jin on the website Film373 does tell us that because of its sometimes ridiculous nature, The Sims isn't meant to be a parody of consumerism. Yet, that doesn't mean it doesn't make any comments on it. Quote, Through continuously exposing its players to material goods and consumption, The Sims creates a platform for the players to reflect on their own ambition in real life. However, it is equally important to recognize that the game has more to offer than to making a critique on this long prevailing American ideology. However, if players let their sims have too much access to these virtual features, they start to become addicted to their phones, reminiscent of how overconsumption of media in real life causes negative effects. User no specialist 4735 on the aforementioned Reddit thread remarks, What bugs me more is I don't like how they play on their phone so much more now. Even though I'm addicted to my phone, I don't want them to be. <laughs> Furthermore, user Crystal Star wrote, It drives me nuts. I want them to do something. Instead, they run to Simstagram. Arr! I hate it. They keep running off to update Simstagram, and the only way to stop it is to lock the computers till they need to do work, stuff, or shopping. Hmm. It's almost like when you see it from an outsider's perspective, it looks ridiculous, right? How many times have you been in a scenario where you are trying to interact with somebody in the real world and they are so glued to their phone that you can't get a thought in edgewise? Have you ever been riding public transit and just looked around to see every single person on their phones? Like no one's staring out the window or anything. <laughs> Or how about at a concert? So many times people are not in the moment, but they are on their phones, which is something a lot of artists are standing against. I have heard stories of certain artists at music festivals or events requiring tape on people's cameras to mitigate phone usage and force people to be in the moment. As someone who has limited their use of social media to an extreme amount, when I see people on their phones scrolling when they should be in a place where they should be enjoying life, it looks absolutely insane to me. Now, of course, some usage of social media is fine. I use it every day, partly because I'm a creator and I'm cursed into needing to use it. But when the tool that we are supposed to use starts using us, that's when we know there is a problem. In an article by thegamer.com on how to use Social Bunny, it explains that just as social media impacts our lives outside of the computer, the Sims is no different. You are able to ask people in the real world for advice on social bunny posts, which changes your Sims mood either positively or negatively, depending on how their posts are received. They also note that, unfortunately, a virtual social life in The Sims won't make up for a live social life, as messages and posts don't increase your Sims social need. This might change in a future update, but for now, you'll have to settle for actually having to hang out with your contact list rather than simply DMing them to up your social need. I for one am really glad that EA decided not to enable one social bar to be filled by social media. No matter how much we think it might in real life, nothing will replace face-to-face -face interaction
interaction with other human beings. We are a social species, and our needs are filled by people in real life, not in the virtual world. When I lived in California a couple of years ago, I used to play VR games online with Josh, who I previously mentioned. This was great and all, as VR is the next best thing to hanging out in real life, but I will tell you, when he and his wife Taryn surprised me and my wife with a visit that winter, nothing compared to actually being with him in person. There is no replacement for actual human interaction. Despite The Sims being a lighthearted game in nature, there are still times when the critique on overconsumption is very prevalent, especially when focusing on The Sim 4's social media career path, which deals with the creator side of social media usage. On this career path, your goal is to attain as many followers as possible so that you can eventually do ad deals and sponsorships, just as in the real world. The unrealistic part is that gaining followers is about 14,000 times more easy than in the real world. It's a game though, so why would it be difficult? EA wants you to keep playing after all. The limited list of progression and actions you can take in this career path is just about as vapid as what gets you followers in the real world though. You start as a media intern, then you progress to engagement monkey, a clickbait writer, a simstagram searcher, a cat video creator. <laughs> <laughs> a nice broadcaster, a meme maker, an online A-lister, a reality show contestant, and then an internet superstar. As you move more up this ladder, you start to get paid more. Although, at the top of the ladder, if you promote a major product or sponsorship, you lose followers. I don't feel like this reflects the real world anymore because we are so desensitized to ads these days. I can't recall any time that I've unfollowed someone for advertising products, but I typically don't follow people online who are famous just because they are famous. I'll sit through an ad if what I'm watching is eventually going to lead to me learning something useful. Speaking of pointless though, when you are a clickbait article writer in The Sims, it's your job to write articles that bring people to your website. Whether the titles match the articles or not isn't your problem. The more incensed the readers are, the better. This is almost exactly the same as it is in real life. Whenever I've read a clickbait article in the past, the meat of the article is so far down the text because being on these websites for more time it means more ad revenue. As with this, and I'm assuming it would be the same way in The Sims, most content is literally garbage. User Echolog on Reddit notes, every day, have your sim do every single option in the social networking category of the computer. I find that upload viral video and start funny meme give a lot of followers, like a million. I'm currently doing the social media career too and had the same reaction, but the more famous you get, the easier it is to accumulate followers. Hmm, could this be because our capitalist system rewards those who will put more eyes on an ad? Yeah, no duh, of course it is. Substance and art don't really matter per se, it's just a uh, who can get the most clicks contest, where the algorithm has become society's god, but more on that concept later. One good thing you can do in The Sims is, if your sim has a good reputation, the game enables you to donate large amounts of money to charity and host benefit parties to gain fame. On the flip side, if your sim has a bad reputation, you can start feuds and public fights to gain fame. Guess which one nets you more followers? That said, despite The Sims' lighthearted nature, being famous isn't all glitz and glam. Famous sims are prone to developing behavioral quirks. These will cause a hindrance to celebrities in their everyday lives and might even overwhelm them. Things such as your sim needing to excessively look at itself in the mirror or needing to drink juice often are comical at best. To negate weird quirks though, you are able to purchase the carefree trait for 3,000 simoleons. The big kahuna of quirks, however, is called a motion bomb. As simscommunity.info states, when the world rotates around you, it's easy to become the emotional center of your own universe. Universe. For these celebrities, anything angering them will cause them to fly off the handle and become enraged. Anything that saddens them requires the world to stop as they struggle to process their feelings. These intense outbursts don't last long. After working through an emotional meltdown, they're back to acting as if nothing was ever wrong at all. The worst part is that your sims have the potential to die if they are enraged and experience a cardiac explosion, so it's wise for players to keep this in check. I find this to be a fascinating critique on fame. So many people think fame is a good thing because fame equals fortune. 
right? Well, fame is not all it's cracked up to be. Sadly, our society perpetuates this due to its obsession with celebrities in a futile attempt to have just one moment of vicariously escaping this dystopian hellhole. However, if there is such a potential for extreme unhappiness on both the consumer and the creator sides of the internet and social media, why do we chase or support internet fame at all? It's the carrot and stick analogy, but with money. And the big tech corporations that run these platforms are raking it in faster than Scrooge McDuck. As a creator who is not yet famous whatsoever, but still paying my bills with my art, I have a unique perspective on this whole topic. Allow me to share my thoughts. <laughs> Personally, I do have qualms with social media while also realizing it is a really useful tool. When I started using YouTube, I made drum covers. This was years ago, but back then, these companies weren't ad businesses first and social platforms second. My videos would organically get thousands and thousands of views, and I didn't even have to do anything for it promotion-wise. Nowadays, I have to post on social media or even run ads for people to find my art. Rarely will people just be looking for the content I make and find it randomly, especially since most people are spoon-fed with an algorithm these days instead of using a search bar. Would I rather be putting together DJ mixes, producing music, and writing? Yeah, I would. I absolutely hate that I have to put together little clips and snippets of what I'm making, and I wish that my videos would just be watched in their true form without any clickbait advertising. But with the way society has classically conditioned itself, it's impossible. As a creator, I feel as though the algorithm just buries things so that brain rot content can shine through. I mean, take a quick scroll through your feeds, really analyze what you are watching, and you'll quickly realize that most of it is completely meaningless. That said, social media is not all bad, and I want to be balanced here. As mentioned above, I have used this tool to benefit my life in several ways, and several people do benefit from these platforms. In fact, some, like Ash Johnson, criticize those such as New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who declared that unrestricted access to social media is a public health hazard. Despite my obvious angst towards social media and garbage content in this video, I don't agree with Mr. Adams at all. Social media is merely a tool, and it should always remain a tool, not something that is a disservice to humanity. Yes, there are real concerns associated with social media, especially as it relates to children and teens, but policymakers will only create more problems by legislating out of fear and public pressure. I couldn't agree more with Ash here, especially considering most of our politicians in this country belong in a nursing home. They shouldn't be making laws at all about things they clearly don't understand. One extreme is just as bad as the other extreme. We must find balance. But how, you ask? Well, I am no expert on anything, really. <laughs> but I'll tell you a few things I practice in my personal life to curb the negative effects of social media, both as a consumer and as a creator. First, and this is the most obvious one, do everything in your power to limit usage. Some people accomplish this by churning off notifications, which is great for me personally. When I see something I need to take care of, I like to do it right away so that I can live my next few moments in peace. If notifications are off, taking care of stuff on apps is not a priority of mine because it's not on my mind. Some people even delete the apps altogether and use their web browsers if they need to check notifications, just like it's 2006. I even put my social media apps on an old iPhone 7 that I'm not using anymore, and when I can sense that social media might be considered consuming me a bit too much, I delete the apps off my main phone and just check my business phone periodically. Next, as a consumer, you could just delete social media altogether. This isn't an option for some, but videos I've seen from people on YouTube saying they deleted social media tell their viewers that it changed their life. You could also just go on a fast or cleanse from it, which I've done before. When I first got into only producing VGM remixes, the Ukraine war had just started, and there was an overall sense of doom on all the apps I was using. I told myself, that's it, and deleted all social media off of my phones and and my browser's bookmark tabs because, you know, I would find it there too. During that three-week cleanse, my productivity went through the roof and my mental health soared. You first have to realize there is a problem and then be willing to do something about it. That said, I feel as though turning notifications off for every single social media app and hiding it in a folder that is not as accessible as other folders on my phone helps me a lot. It's how I maintain a balance between the apps not running my life and being able to use them as tools that serve me. Finally, just 
practice your right to quiet enjoyment. <laughs> Get away from screens once in a while. Go and stare at a tree. Talk to someone face to face and put your phones in the other room. Just sit there and do nothing and be okay with the fact that you're not being productive. In fact, fight capitalist 1% bullshit by literally not being productive once in a while. It's okay. We all need to rest before we get back to kicking ass in life. When we drink too much, we develop a tolerance to alcohol. This can be said about so many things in life too, from vices and working out to even the effects of certain foods. In my research, I never saw anything online about developing a tolerance to social media though. It's like we are numb to it, but we still scroll because in the slot machine wasteland that is social media, we want to stumble upon something awesome that activates our dopamine receptors. Humans were never made for this, and the shit show that society is becoming is terrifying me more and more each day. What if you are a creator though? Social media for creators is a necessary evil. As I mentioned before, I only use it because I am forced to, yet I am taking measures to slowly get off these platforms and not depend on them anymore. I guess except YouTube, which I don't really consider social media, but I guess it could be used that way if you want it to be, but that's not how I use it, and it's never been a temptation to like scroll through through shorts or whatever. So anyways, when you need to sparingly use these platforms, if you catch yourself scrolling, stop, put your phone down and do something else that will serve you. When you're scrolling, make it a point to support your people. For example, if I am scrolling and I see something from the Icarus Kid, The Limit Breakers, or Vector U, for instance, I immediately click like. Videos that have millions of views and likes though, I usually just skip. I am in the mindset of they don't need my help and you should get into that too. Also, start an email list. An email list is one of the best ways to ensure a community knows about your stuff without having to depend on a big tech platform that could potentially bury what you are saying because it doesn't fit in with the algorithm. Next, you should integrate into your local community of whatever discipline you interact with, if this is an option for you. Just as your sim won't have its social bar filled by being online only, get out into the real world and connect with some people. I for one am insanely lucky that I live in Minnesota and that both the VGMCon and 2DCon communities are here. Because of that, I have an incredible family that I love dearly. No, seriously guys. I love you. So many opportunities open up when you are just good to the people around you. David Tuline, one of my earliest influences in my music career would tell me, it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. Reframing it like this has changed my life. Too often, people rely on knowing someone, but a relationship was never established. So the connection is meaningless. Be a relationship builder and you'll go far. In addition, don't be so dependent on an algorithm for your income. Diversify your business and create more revenue streams so you aren't dependent on just one source of of income. This will keep you from posting shit you hate just to make money. Another thing to do is to get rid of the main character syndrome mindset and if you don't have it, be so hyper aware of it <laughs> that you never let yourself fall into its clutches. This will diminish the constant need to always be posting or even to be like your sim who has the vain street quirk and always needs to look in the mirror. Be like my hero and forever idol, Andrew Bayer. This dude is the most talented DJ and producer I've ever come across due to the balance of filth and beauty beauty and meaning in his music. This man will post like once a month or two on social media, and when he does, it means something. I always look forward to seeing what he'll post next, but I never think about it. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter that he is not posting every single day to stay irrelevant. The dude does what he wants and it works. He is still signed to Seven Lions label. He's constantly touring and he's inspiration to those like myself. Not only do I produce in such a manner that I hope to sound like him, I am also trying to replicate the way he uses social media because I feel like it's the most healthy. In conclusion, if there's one thing I've noticed in our world today, it's that the algorithm has become people's god, both on the creator and the consumer side. For the consumer, chasing that next hit of dopamine is what they are dependent on. Fueled by a random algorithm, people have even begun to outsource knowledge to social media and influencers, which is not a good thing in most cases. Do your own research, that's all I'm saying. Don't just rely on what an influencer or internet personality said. Heck, don't even rely on what I'm saying right now. Like, search it for yourself. Also, for those of you who think AI will replace us someday, <laughs> I have news for you. The algorithm already has. So much of humanity are slaves to these algorithms, which were invented by people just trying to extract as much attention as possible, which drains people towards invalidity. I have a distinct memory of scrolling on TikTok for way too long when the Ocean Gate disaster happened, and I felt like literally doing nothing else the rest of the day. There was almost a feeling of fatigue and sickness over me. It was incredibly shitty. As I previously mentioned, it has become popular for creating 
creators just to please the algorithm so that more money can be made. Everyone is posting in hopes of random ones and zeros, pushing them into stardom. But for what? Because this is so tied to money, our society will never be free from this slavery. And I will die on this hill. We need to start speaking out against it, not tying our creations too much to money. Some is okay, obviously, but be balanced. And spread awareness that big tech companies' algorithms ruling our society are literally killing us mentally and sometimes even physically. As far as my life goes, I am always going to speak out against it. Like, do you know how happy I am that I'm not famous? Getting mobbed doesn't sound like a fun time. This betweenness that I'm living right now is perfect. I'm paying my bills with music and being a creator, but I don't get mobbed on the street because I'm famous. It's such a sweet spot that I cherish. So don't think for one second I'm saying this out of angst or jealousy that I'm not the famous one yet. That is never going to be my goal and thus puts me in a unique spot to speak out against this problem in society. <laughs> And speak out I will. I often say in my videos that we can do a lot more united than divided. And look, if you look at the trends on social media, you'll see this is absolutely true. When people unite around a trend, it absolutely blows up. However, if someone does something unique on their own, it won't be seen. A few years ago, you had to be unique to stand out, but now it seems you just have to be like the rest of society to get noticed, aka following trends instead of making something meaningful and unique. This is even prevalent in The Sims, where, as an influencer, you are only mostly allowed to do really vain things, other than charity streams, to gain followers. If only the trends that people united around could be used for good in society. Man, I honestly believe that they still could be though. I believe that on a micro level, humans have such limitless potential, and despite how negative most of this video was, I still believe that. Yet right now, trends to strengthen society and progress us forward don't seem to be too prevalent. Yeah, there might be exceptions, but it is rare. That said, I'm urging society to be better. Become aware of when you are ingesting and supporting garbage. I am also urging creators to just be themselves. Don't fall into the trap of creating stuff just to please the algorithm if it's not what you want to make. Yeah, you might get fewer views, you might get unfollowed, but is your integrity more important or the almighty dollar? If you argue that the latter is more important, I would urge you to do a deep dive into your psyche and reanalyze your values in life. If it is the former, just continue to be you, have integrity, and don't give in to society's whims. It has taken me 17 years, but here I am, finally doing what I love. And because my income is diversified, I'm able to live this lifestyle without being the algorithm's bitch. I will continue to do so as well because, well, <laughs> I never got anywhere good in life by conforming to the rest of society's standards. Hey, also, I've decided to stop doing the YouTube crap at the end of my videos. You're a grown-ass adult. Follow me if you want to. In the next video in this series, I'll be analyzing how games like Tetris relate to real life. That's going to be a fun one. And it's going to involve a lot of gameplay. So stay tuned. Until then, take care of each other, and stay strong in this crazy world we live in.